up is ready. Gee, Ma, we want to finish the game. Well, you can go out again later. It'll be dark then. Well, come in. Deep in the heart of every American boy is the feeling that he needs a lot more time for play. But for Bill is his need for more answers to play. For in most cities throughout the United States today, playgrounds are woefully lacking and youngsters are forced to seek amusement in the city streets. In the smaller communities, although space is usually plentiful, it is seldom equipped for recreation, and children congregating in the roadways are constantly exposed to danger. In spite of careful driving, the inevitable happens. In a single year in the U.S., as many as 800 boys and girls have been killed and more than 50,000 injured in street accidents. Even in localities where parks and playgrounds have been established, there are still far too few facilities to meet the demand. And players often find it necessary to waste many hours just waiting for their turn on the courts. But after a time, patience wears thin, and the young may soon settle for other places of amusement and other kinds of fun. On their own and away from all supervision, they may quickly acquire the free and easy habits which all too often lead to delinquency. Instead of the team spirit of the playing field, they may develop the marauding habits of the underworld. It is only a short step to outright crime. That thousands of teenage boys and girls run afoul of the law each year is conclusive evidence that the community recreational problem is still far from solved. Though recreation alone will not prevent delinquency, it does help to maintain the moral and physical health of the community. During World War II, some three and a half million young men who might have been healthier and stronger had they been provided with adequate recreation areas in their childhood, were rejected as unfit for service in the armed forces. Even more disastrous than physical deterioration is the alarming increase in mental illness among all age groups. In the U.S. today, one person out of every 20 must undergo treatment in a mental institution, many of them at the taxpayer's expense. Today, public-spirited groups of every kind are zealously working to make up for the omissions of the past by promoting and even helping to finance more and better playgrounds. And throughout the country, progressive municipalities are coming to realize that recreation is an essential part of community life, ranking in importance with public health and education. Civic leaders and elected officials of cities and towns of every size are today reappraising the outdoor recreational needs of their people and in many cases are taking the necessary action to meet them. But though some progress is being made, the job ahead is still a big one. Of the more than 16,000 U.S. municipalities, only a scant 2,500 have organized recreation services. And though playgrounds require trained leaders, just as schools need qualified teachers, only one-eighth of the nation's recreational workers are employed full-time the year-round. It is the recreation worker's job to teach youngsters how to play according to the rules of the game and to encourage them in the ways of good sportsmanship.
chance to play is essential to the well-being of all, regardless of age. For most people, young or old, no form of recreation has greater appeal than a relaxing swim on a summer afternoon. And today they are able to enjoy the luxury of modern up-to-date pools, if they are fortunate enough to live in a progressive community. But the facilities of the community play areas must be diversified to accommodate the preferences of all. And they must be made available at the least possible cost. <laughs> 